Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at the real, nominal, and effective interest rates. With that said, let's get into it. So to begin, we're going to look at the nominal interest rate. And the nominal interest rate is also known as the coupon rate, and it represents the direct cost borrowers incur from lenders without considering additional economic influences. Typically, this is just the face value rate that you see on a loan or maybe a savings account, something like that. Now the real interest rate is a little bit different. And the reason for that is the real interest rate takes into consideration inflation, providing a more accurate measurement of a borrower's purchasing power after the loan has been paid off. So this takes into account the value of your money and it can actually be used in a formula that goes as follows. The real interest rate is equal to the nominal rate minus the inflation rate. Finally, we have the last type of interest rate, the effective interest rate. And the effective interest rate includes the impact of compounding, which a bond may pay interest annually, but compounds semi-annually, increasing the overall return than what it might look like nominally. Now, similar to the real interest rate, it also has a formula, but this one's a little bit more complicated because it looks at compound interest. The formula is as follows. The effective interest rate is equal to one plus the nominal rate divided by the number of compounding periods to the power of the number of compounding periods minus one. Now let's take a look really briefly at an example and then we'll look at an example with enough information to solve for all three rates at the end of the video. So let's take a look at an effective interest rate example first. In this example, a bond pays 6% annually. Now that 6% is the nominal interest rate and it compounds semi-annually and the investor would place $1,000 in this bond and he will receive $30 of interest for the first six months because that's the first half of the semi-annual compounding period. This $30 is just 1,000 times 0 0.03, which is 3% of 1,000. And they will also receive $30.90 of interest after the next six months, which is $1,030 times 0 0.03 or 3%. And you might notice that the $30 that they made in interest in the first six months, the interest then was applied again to that new number of 1,030 rather than just 1,000. So in total, the investor receives $60.90 for the year. And in this example, the nominal rate would suggest that they earn $60 back, but they actually earn $60.90. So while the nominal rate is 6%, the effective rate is 6.09. It's your real return when you include the effects of compounding. Now let's take a look at all three examples, the nominal versus real versus effective interest rates in one cohesive example. Consider an economy where we have someone interested in taking a loan. Now, the key information is the nominal interest rate of 8%. The length of the loan is five years or 60 months. The compounding frequency is monthly. So this loan will compound interest every month. And then finally, the inflation rate in this economy is 3%. Now, if somebody asks you for the nominal interest rate, super easy, it's given to you, it's 8%. Now the real interest rate follows the formula of the nominal interest rate minus the inflation rate, which in this case is 8% minus 3%. Therefore, the real interest rate is just 5%. Finally, let's take a look at the new content for this video, the effective interest rate, which follows this huge formula right here, but it doesn't look so bad once I start filling in my known values. So the effective interest rate is equal to one plus 8%, which is the nominal rate, divided by the number of compounding periods, which is 60, raised to the power of the number of compounding periods, which is 60, and then I subtract one at the very end to get my interest without including my principal. So if I turn 8% into a decimal, it's going to give me one plus 0 0.08 over 60 to the power of 60 minus one. If I plug all of this into my calculator, it will give me a value of 0 0.08322934, Five, two. Obviously, I can simplify this to two decimal points, which tells me the effective interest rate is just 8.32. Now, if you look at this, there's a lot of different numbers going on. There's a real interest rate of 5%, there's a nominal interest rate of 8%, and then there's an effective interest rate of 8.32%. The spread from the lowest rate to the highest rate is actually over 3.3%, which is a lot. That's a huge spread. So when you're looking at real returns, you must include both the number of compounding periods into your consideration, as well as inflation and looking at the real interest rate. So which formula you would use to calculate depends on a number of economic factors, but this is how you calculate all three rates individually, as I'm sure you may be asked on an economics test. I hope you found the video helpful, and if you did, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and of course, let us know in the comment section what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.